Well, this is our fourth vintage or fourth year for us being up here. I, I think I missed one year when Thomas came up, who is our national sales director. But uh, it's beautiful up here, and, and uh, we have always been had a presence in British Columbia uh, for a long time, and also at Alberta, uh, probably with John Claridis, you know, who does our who does our sales up here in BC. But the bigger reason why I'm in, I like it is just because it, it's a way to export wine, and uh, it's our next door neighbor, and it's accessible, so I can make it up here and. And uh, a couple of times a year, we come to Whistler, and one time we'll try to spend some time in Vancouver. But it's it's a way to get your cut your teeth on doing export, and I just feel it's really important. If you want to be a world player, you need to really try to think about export. We, we, as you might know, we also make a second brand called Nelms Road, and uh, a Merlot and a Cab both. But we don't focus on those wines here in here in, in the in the British Columbia market because we want them to think about the high end a part of, of Washington and the high end part of Woodward Canyon. So we bring our best things here. We bring our Chardonnay, our Merlot, our Artist Series Cab, and our Old Vine Cab. And I'll tell you something, if you are ever thinking about exporting right now, this would be a good time. It's got to help us a little bit. The dollar, Canadian dollar and the American dollar are, I think, six cents off right now from par. And so, of course, it's got to help. But it also means that you have to come up and help make it. Just don't count on the dollar to do it. You'd have to come up and have a presence and have a visible. I mean, I think the fact that Rick Small comes to Vancouver and comes up and does this thing at Whistler is, is helpful. Uh, and uh, you know you gotta you gotta put your money where your mouth is. But, yeah. Sure. And and I'll tell you the other reason why this is important. There are people here from Portland and there are people here from Seattle. So people come up here to ski. So it's like people who go to Banff or people who go to Jasper or something like that. Some of the sales of the wines that I have, even when I'm in in Alberta, uh, isn't being necessarily sold to Canadians. A lot of it is. Most of it is. But there are people who come from the Northwest or from other parts of the United States that know my wine from Chicago or New York or San Francisco who see it in Banff, let's say, and uh, or here at Whistler, and uh, will buy the wine because they know the wine. Or they learn about the wine here and go back looking for it in Chicago or go back looking for it in L.A. Uh, there's a few of my neighbors that are here, and uh, but a few others. The Wine Commission has a table here and a very visible presence here this year as, it, as they did last year. And so they're, uh, they're helping pour for a bunch of the winemakers and winery owners that aren't able to come up here. This is probably the fourth or fifth year that I've been here, although we haven't been for the last four or five years. We took a few years off, we were here right at the very beginning, and then we decided to come back, and it's grown a lot. Well, you're having to learn all these different laws, aren't you? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the laws are a lot different, it's just very interesting. Is it challenging, or are there some things you like about it, as opposed to what, how it's handled in the States? Um, it's challenging. Okay. I think that the, when they want a special order of wine that's not listed, it's a really long wait. The restaurants have to pay up front. That's hard on the restaurants. And there's not really a wholesale level, which is hard on the restaurants and the customers wanting to buy it in, in the restaurants. I think it's a kind of a challenge to market Oregon wine in British Columbia. They have their own wine industry. The way the wine is sold at the retail level is a lot different than how we do it at home. So it's great to have all these consumers and restaurants trying our wine, talking to us, getting enthusiastic about it. I think there's a few uh, local restaurants that are just starting to carry our brand. We have nice re representation up here. And uh, we'll hopefully, after a bit like this, touch a lot of consumers and then see a lot of follow through. I think it's a great uh, Northwest venue. We've got a lot of consumers. There are consumers all up and down the coast, California, Washington, Oregon, as well as BC. Uh, we obviously want to support our distributor up here, our agent, and we've got excellent placements, and it happens to be in a fun location. I would say it's a younger market uh, a little bit uh, overall. Um, it's definitely a little bit more cosmopolitan. Uh, there are lots of folks from Australia. There are lots of folks from other parts of the world. Um, and a lot more transient in that regard. But at the same token, I think it's pretty uh, exciting. There's an emerging you know, awareness. Certainly the Okanagan Valley kind of lends itself that way too. We've had a lot of success. Honestly, uh, we're in probably nearly every restaurant here in town. And I don't know if it's in, in tail just from uh, Cornucopia, but I think that certainly supports it. I mean, already today I've seen Highs, uh, Quattro, a, a, a number of different restaurants. Too. And our distributor, uh, Ms. Elizabeth here, New World Wines, does a fantastic job with you. I understand that uh, Thoreau's and Whistler, I think the commission is trying to keep a flat line dollar. That won't be the effect with credit cards. At the same token, uh, I think there'll be even more pressure.
pressure for the uh, government, if you will, to reduce prices of U.S.-based wines. I mean, they, they were able to use the, the, the dollar exchange as the rationale for higher costs of our wines up here. So hopefully we get some pressure uh, reducing the cost and less barrier to entry. You know, that's, and, and there's only so many wonderful destination places, if you will. Wistowick was right up there. Not quite the level of, of Aspen, but, you know, Sun Valley event, Whistler's event, etc. This this is a flagship event I think more and more wineries should be paying attention to, and more and more consumers should as well. There's, there's plenty of uh, resources up here to enjoy, including the, you know, the restaurants, etc. So we're, we're, we're pleased to be a part of it. I think that we have something to, to share that's important just in a, a, a Western state's perspective. And there's a lot of cooperation, actually, friendly competition, a lot of co cooperation between um, BC and, and Washington State. And we're all pretty friendly about it, and I think that there's a lot to be learned going both ways. And uh, we appreciate a lot of what uh, BC has done in their wine industry, and so we have things to learn from them. And, um, and I think that they are certainly have an appreciation of some of the fine reds that Washington has. So it's, it's exciting, and we're being very well received, and we're brand new this year. This is our fifth year, and it's uh, we're doing some great business up in British Columbia, and it's a great event, and, and touches the right clientele that we're looking for. Is Idaho a difficult sell up here? Actually, it is not. It's uh, when people say I've never had a wine from Idaho, and they try it, they're pleasantly surprised what they get in the bottle, so in their glass. You've seen this event evolve since you've been here for a few years. Yeah. How can you tell us what it was like? When you first came, and when you a lot, a lot like smaller, now. we were in a different facility, and it, it grew to the point where we needed to use this conference center, and uh, a lot of great wine consumers that are really interested in learning about wines up here. You know, Taste Washington. There's so many more wineries. This one's a lot more international than you know than U.S. domestic because we're in Canada. We get a lot more people from Australia and New Zealand, but you know, being so close, Washington State being so close to BC, it's. It's got a lot of crossover and it's been very well received. When you're up in British Columbia, what are the varieties that people are looking for? You know, the Rhone varieties we do, really for Satyath and Zafina, have, are very well received up here. Almost even more than Washington, they actually know more about them up here than they do there. So it's that's probably been the biggest surprise for me, selling wines up here. You know, the, the market's great up here. Uh, we hopefully we can get the government to react to the dollar, you know, weakening in our area, so we can get some prices that you know we can sell more wine in the future. Yeah, great. Well, we uh, I, I mean Whistler for one is uh, very much our demographic. Um, we resonate, I think, with the outdoor crowd. Uh, a lot of practical applications for outdoor activities, but you know, more so launching into this this Canada market, uh, you know, any exposure is good exposure. And trying to put a, a good first foot forward. What sort of response have you gotten about your packaging and the wine in general? This you know, thus far it's been positive. As as uh, thankfully it has been most places, and uh, you know, it's it's always something unique. People have never seen, of course, anything that, that looks like it, and then. Uh, to be able to back it up with good wine quality is, is I think, surprising to them. Oftentimes, you'll get passer buyers that you know are, are just looking and not trying, and then once you fill their glass, they're not somewhat believers. So.